I'm so thankful that the weather cleared for us today, and most of the relatives were coming from the south, not from the north. <laughs> so, so we are very lucky and not from the west. So I was telling someone that we were having a coat problem. I said the coat problem didn't exist until the day before yesterday, you know, until yesterday. So I said, we weren't wearing coats. <laughs> so you'll have to find your coats under all the chairs. <laughs> but um, this has come together so well for mom. <laughs> She would ask me about it. Oh, well, we don't have to do a party. I go, well, Mom, we're going to do a party. So here, my brother has things to say. First of all, let's thank Mary and Amy and Claire and everybody that brought food. They're really good. For us, um, Claudia brought salad, so we thank you for helping out with that too. And, and Roland, uh, Lois's brother, couldn't be here, but he brought the cupcakes. So. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy those. Ninety of them. Oh. 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 Have two. And, and, and it only took me till last night when Stephen pointed out ninety mine. <laughs> I just thought it was the appropriate number. <laughs> well, um, nothing makes Lois happier than to see relatives get together and talk and greet each other and share stories and just enjoy each other's company. So I hope you can all hang out as long as you want and really let everybody hear everybody's story and tell everybody your story. And really reconnect well so I hope that a lot of that happens today. Um, now a lot of you know a lot about mom's story but I'm going to kind of go over some of it and then and then what I really want to convey is the sense of right from the beginning of our lives the sense of sharing a family kind of loving kindness with everybody and devoting our life to service has been what mom has inspired in us. And I think we've all been infected to some degree. And uh, and when I talk about the kinds of things she's done in her life, you go, oh my god, this must be 10 people you're talking about, not one person. But, um, but and I guess most of you know, this isn't actually her birthday. It's on the 22nd. It's so close to Thanksgiving, though, that people with Birthdays really close to big holidays get robbed of the attention they deserve. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. working out well. But um, Lois was born in the year 1926, which is coming around in 10 years. We'll have 100 years. And she was born in Watkins, Minnesota, and went to Kimball High School. She graduated as a registered nurse that's from St. Catharines, the St. Joseph Hospital School of Nursing in St. Paul. And I think um, Dorothy Roman is here, one of her classmates. Where is Dorothy? Well, I think she went up to see her husband. He was, he was walking down the hall. And did Mary Jean come? Mary Jean, your other classmate? No. Okay. She said she was going to. So, or, I mean, think of the number of years, and there's still is a couple classmates out there that we're, we're trying to come. So, good. And when we were young, um, uh, Lois worked at uh, Anoka State Hospital as a nurse. For about 10 years, she worked there. And then she went back to school while we were kind of in high school or junior high school age. Went back to the University of Minnesota and got a degree in public nursing and became the public school nurse for the Elk River School District for like 17 years. And she tell, I have to tell a story about that, that she tells a story about how um, she was a nurse already, she was working at Anoka State, and that wasn't your dream job or whatever. She went to the superintendent of schools of Elk River and said, hey, you know, do you need a school nurse? Said, you know, I don't know, maybe, I suppose. <laughs> they could use one. She goes, well, if I go back to school and get my public health degree, can I be the school nurse here? 
goes, well, I, don't know, I guess. <laughs> so that's what you did. You went back to school for a couple of years, at, is that like two more years? Three more years at the University of Minnesota, despite trying to raise us. And um, you went back to him and he said, okay, yeah. <laughs> back to the job. How many years? What? 17 years as the public school nurse? Well, and, it, and now, it wasn't just the five of us, the three kids and mom and dad. We took in other people, too. <laughs> Good um, people. <laughs> a couple nieces for a couple of years yeah. for the Holman family. And uh, we had a, a, a foreign student from Germany for a year. And uh, Karen from Chicago for a couple of years. So it was kind of an open family. We took in more people as time went on. And um, we took My in friends, I, I interject the little funny thing. <laughs> but I have friends who I just had my, I don't know what, 40th class reunion, what that high school class reunion. They still talk about Gloria and Marie. <laughs> you would think you'd lived with us for 10 years. <laughs> but they still, because it was probably my elementary school years, whatever, and that's just their memories of yeah. you guys. That's <laughs> I did some early cooking when you guys were staying with us, and you guys were the guinea pigs, and I wasn't so good. So I'm sorry. I hope you don't remember. <laughs> um, we also. Um, Let's see, we, we took in um, my dad's mother. She lived with us for a while before she moved to San Diego. Yeah. And then um, mom's mother, Grand, Grandma Kelly, lived with us for a good while. And then lived in the nursing home in Alberta for a while. Um, and we had Isra Aklilu from Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. He lived with us. He was a foreign exchange student. Do you remember him? Biz? Just for a couple of years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember his name? <laughs> what a memory. If only we all had memories that good. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, Mom has lived here in Bloomington since uh, uh, about 2011, I think. And uh, she has made so many friends here. Um, it's, it's great. I mean, I was down at the door and people would come in, what's going on? I said, it's Lois's 90th birthday party. Oh, Lois! <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Um, and, and she's here she's donated the, the Clavinova and um, and she, I'm going to get into all the things she does as service. Um, but she is, how many people here have something knitted or crocheted or quilted by the way? <laughs> Virtually everybody. <laughs> I think mom has, uh, she, she quit counting at a thousand quilts, I think. And, and uh, she makes uh, mittens and hats and things for homeless people. She, uh, for years she was making dresses and pants for uh, children in Africa and sending them over there. Um, rosaries. All kinds of stuff, and uh, it's just some of that stuff just goes on and on. I've got three pages. Oh, now here's a second. No, now we have, to talk. we have to talk. Okay, Rita. Jerry, that quilt over there, my son got it. Lois made that for him. When was it? It was Dan. Dan. 1972. 1972. Oh, yeah. Isn't that just funny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know how many of you believe that you won a raffle one month to get a quilt. She never had a raffle. It was all a lie. She would... <laughs> She would just decide, okay, so-and-so needs a quilt, so she would tell them you won the raffle. <laughs> so she just made sure she got everybody a quilt. <laughs> and some of the stuff I didn't know because I was too young. I, when we first moved to Elk River in 1949, the year I was born, uh, Lois organized, was the first organizer for Mother's March of Dimes in Elk River, and she continued that for several years. 
And then the year after that, uh, she was president of the Elk River Community Club. I was too young to know about that. Uh, the next year, uh, she worked with Sherburne County Mental Health Organization and helped organize it and was active for several years in that. Uh, also organized Elk River Senior Citizens and organized the first meetings of that. She was a 4-H leader, a den leader, a, a brownie leader, camp nurse for 4-H for four years. And some of those were challenging. I remember when we arrived in camp one year and the workmen had kind of been cleaning up the camp to make it more presentable. Well, they had this huge bonfire and were burning all this um, poison ivy. All these kids suddenly broke out with poison ivy and mom was in charge of handling this. <laughs> Uh, she, she was a PTA president for a year. Uh, she was Red Cross first aid and CPR teacher for about 10 years, taught teachers and scouts and swimming classes and firemen and campers. Uh, she worked with Common Cause, was a member of the state legislative committee for a couple of years, uh, was involved in American Field Service, and it was on the local committee for four years. Uh, in the 70s, she worked with the Minnesota School Nurses Branch, and she was secretary for four years. And she's an author. She co-authored School Nursing Goals in Minnesota. Uh, in 1982, she was with the uh, Greater Elk River United Way. She was on the board for two years. The Sherman County Cancer Society Education Chairman for five years and convention delegate. Uh, worked with the DFL uh, canvassing. Was county, went to the county convention about five times. There's a couple more pages. <laughs> how, many people, how many people do you think would take so far? And, um, oh, where's their next? Um, skip some of this. <laughs> Sherman County Social Services for two years, monitored handicapped emergency call system, um, uh, Cancer Society Drive, went to house to house to campaign for them. Was, it should be, she was Volunteer of the Year in 1986, nominated for Elk River City Volunteer of the Year, um, got a plaque for Volunteer for City of Elk River in 2015, Americanism Medal from American Legion Auxiliary. She was very involved in American Auxiliary for many years and kind of ran the organization for a few years. And it's just, it's kind of funny, you know, that every night there was a meeting, right? Because she had meetings of everything. And she wasn't just a committee member. She always became the president of every event that she was. And then one day she would say, oh, I'm just tired of all this. She would quit all of her committees. And I'd ask her why. She goes, well, that people didn't move fast enough for her. <laughs> You know, she was ready to make things happen and go and whatever, and people just, you know, they drain their feet, they do the same thing they always do, and she goes, I've got better things to do with my time. So she would quit everything. Within a year, she would be back to being president of five more things. <laughs> she would just take on other stuff. It was just nonstop. Um, I don't see anything about like the Catholic Church on there, the Christian Mothers, all that. Is that kind of like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, she worked with the Guardian Angels Care Center Auxiliary for about 10 years, was Secretary and Publicity Chairman. Uh, she was uh, mend and sew for the residents for about 20 years. She uh, still mends and sews everything here. Uh, <laughs> I think she's the resident seamstress. <laughs> She was, back then she was an organ and piano player for the Bible services and special programs, developed five sing-along books, uh, did that for about five years, um, family council of presidents for 1989. With St. Andrew's Catholic Church, she was uh, Stephen's minister for three years, that involved one-to-one -one visiting to those in need. Uh, she helped with the fall bazaars every year and funeral dinners for 50 or 60 years. Uh, sung in the church choir for 36 years and received an award for that. And you know what the choir director said they were supposed to do before they sang? Have a little glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> so we always had Mogan David wine in our refrigerator because it was for choir practice. <laughs> One time I was 
a little jealous of this Logan David wine in there, and I thought I would try that because she just went off to practice choir and I was left at home. So I took a little sip of it and then I went out for a bike ride. <laughs> Don't try it. <laughs> Capitalist taken. She doesn't know. <laughs> and uh, uh, mom and dad were uh, one of six couples who taught uh, a marriage preparation course. They did that for seven, for eight years to engaged couples. Um, mom replaced upholstery on the kneelers as needed in the church for about ten years. Can you imagine that? All the kneelers in a church. <laughs> she went out and bought the Naga hide or whatever, cut them all, whatever, and had the foam, had to go remove all of the kneeler stuff, and then Dad and you would go up to the church with the staple gun and do each kneeler. <laughs> I think it over there. <laughs> I made a map of the church. <laughs> I knew which ones needed. <laughs> 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 and I was peeling away and it would get caught in your nylon. <laughs> <laughs> Mom served as president of Christian Mothers Society in 1949 and then did two other terms, one in 1960 and one in 1970. She served on the committee to set up bylaws for the first church council, served as secretary and newsletter chair of Minnesota Council of Catholic Women for three years, and uh, served as St. Andrew's Mission Group chairperson for four years in the 1950s. Man. I think you get the idea. Man. What a life. <laughs> She still raised such three wonderful children. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you must have almost just been the easiest children on the planet. We well, must have been. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, I heard stories about them later. But you know, um, it really it, it took a team. You know, my dad and her. Um, I used to joke with people about. Um, you know how there's these stories about how if you ask your mom and she says, no, go ask your dad, whatever, and then you can get by with it? I would tell people that my parents were the kind of people that my dad could be on the West Coast, my mother could be on the East Coast, and I could, you know, try to get by with something with either one. They always had the same answer. <laughs> uh, you could get past them that way. They always knew what the answer was that each one would have said. So... I think that probably helped a lot, <laughs> that consistency. It helped me, I don't know if it helped you. It's better to do it a month later. Yeah, I've heard that, I'm sorry. But yeah, so, but um, also because um, my dad was very involved in family life too, and child rearing, and while she was going to the University of Minnesota, my dad was doing shift work and he would make the breakfasts, make the dinners. Um, we loved it, actually, when Mom wasn't home for dinner because we got <laughs> pancakes. <laughs> were some of his other favorites, but that was that Mom didn't really want to make pancakes for dinner, so we got some good meals for that. We also had the, the neighbor lady came and babysat when their shifts didn't match up right, whatever, so it's kind of like, I don't really remember her, which says that she wasn't that big of my life, you know. Um, no permanent damage. No, no, nothing big there. <laughs> except poor, poor Ida Ferretti, who lived uh, down the street. She was about 90 years old, I think, when she babysat us. And apparently one night I didn't want to go to bed and I kicked and broke her ribs. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't tell you right away, though, apparently, right? <clears throat> no, the social service called. <laughs> 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 we won't bring that up. <laughs> what a nasty little girl. But um, so I mean, it really took a lot for Dad to work shift work for you to be going to the University of Minnesota. Um, and I can't remember when you were with us. Was that was she done with the University of Minnesota? Yeah. When you were at our house, or Gloria Marie. 
I think she was going to school. So I think so too. About that time, Where, when when Lori and Marie were with me, were you going to school? That was in uh, I think sixty one or sixty two. Because I didn't know if I should skip university or what. But mom and dad just kept going. <laughs> I fell in love. Actually, yeah, yeah. I made a really good um, pie. What was that? The graham cracker pie. Oh. While you were gone, and I made it for Gloria and Bree and my friends. And I thought it was pretty darn good. Um, Rose came home, looked at it, and said, that is terrible, and she threw it out. <laughs> and I go, why did you throw it out? She goes, well, Mary, did you bake it? It was a vanilla pudding or something like that. You're supposed to bake it. Well, apparently I hadn't. I don't know. <laughs> but it tasted very good anyway. It's not the beginning of the raw food movement. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there's another side that we haven't even talked about. Mom has done more for the family as far as investigating who's related to who and family oh, yeah. tree. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, been on uh, Ancestry.com and Family Tree Micer, and she's got this elaborate who's connected to who in, in different countries. And, and last, I think it was last year, we gave her that uh, little packet where you can get your DNA tested. And now she's got all kinds of norm, more people who can get into the tree. And, and, uh, and uh, she's really looking for more people to get involved in that and help with that kind of project. So if you have any interest in that at all, talk to his mom and she'd be glad to hear about it. It's a never ending project. Yeah. You know, everybody on the planet is closer than 50th cousin. And most of us uh, are closer than about 15th cousin. And in the room, it's about first and second cousin, I think. But, uh, but yeah, it's fascinating to, to work with that. You learn a lot of interesting stories. People who are our relatives who were in the Civil War and we got letters from them and stuff like that. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. And probably the other thing besides saying about how consistent my mom and dad were, I think the other thing is um, you just don't have a bad thing to say about anybody. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> You know, she just keeps, uh, you must have thoughts in your head, I mean, please. <laughs> but she does not say them. So, it, and I, part of it is, a little bit, you know, before HIPAA, <laughs> you know, she was the school nurse. She would know all the stories going on with all the kids at school, but she couldn't tell us that. But what you could tell, if you said a name of a kid at school, and she would kind of like, raise her eyes or something I'm like what do you know about that <laughs> but she would never share about it that was the only indication I ever would have that what's going on with that person but you in general you just don't have anything bad to say about anybody how do you do that <laughs> and she says she has a she, her nickname was kind of like Miss Sunshine growing up and you notice I did not get a smiley face on the moon for you. <laughs> um, and a Pollyanna attitude is what she was also told she has. You know, like you should just see the bright side of everything. If only we could all be like that. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, right next to the golden rule, I think, was that phrase of, if you can't say anything good about somebody, don't say anything at all. Yeah. We, Memorize that one. Your mom's saying it. Yeah. Is it Tracy Slater? Thank you, everybody, and thank. You. Uh, and feel free. To, there's more food. Help yourself and drink. Mom, do you want to say something? Oh, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody for coming, and I really, you're you're right on. <laughs> I, I love it. <coughs> when we all get together and can share stories but uh, you didn't mention all our trips John liked to travel he wishes he would have been a pilot so he could travel around but he never did that and uh, we've been to the Caribbean many times we went to Europe once 